Hello everyone, my name is Jeevan Desada. I am a senior product manager in the Microsoft Identity Engineering Group. In this video, I'm going to talk through a single sign-on demo to configure a non-Microsoft application to Azure Ready. But before we dive in, we will talk about how critical identity is in any organization. Organizations face various identity challenges. Organizations have seen an increase in SaaS applications both on and off the traditional corporate network that require management and governance. Most enterprises have an average of 180 applications in their environment. The network perimeter is disappearing and resources are moving to the cloud. We know that hybrid work is here and it's going to be like that for some time. A hybrid workplace brings the need for IT modernization, increased productivity, and better security. With managed apps, you can also stay updated on compliance regulations for better governance, privacy, and security. With new applications, manage unmanaged devices, internal and external identities, identities has become the common denominator. We have device identities, application identities, and IoT identities. Identity is the control plane that let us manage and govern this disparate and highly connected environment. Now I'll walk you through the steps to configure Zscaler application for single sign-on to Azure AD. For the demo, you have to log in into the portal.azure.com website. This is the Azure management portal. And make sure that when you log in into the portal, you have an administrator role. That means either you have to be a cloud application administrator, or you can be a global administrator. Into the Azure portal, you will see Azure Active Directory as a service. When you click on that, all these SaaS applications are managed through enterprise application. Enterprise application all application page shows all your applications which your organization is actually configured to use. You can able to add new application by clicking on the new application button over here and now it will actually show you the app gallery. The Azure Active Directory app gallery has all the application templates for SaaS applications. Here now I'm going to search for Zscaler as an application and you can see we have all Zscaler particular application templates available. My tenant belongs to Zscaler 2 so I'm going to actually add Zscaler 2 application over here. I'll provide the name of the application as a Zscaler 2 demo and I'll click create. With this, the application will get created into your tenant and it will be ready for configuration. Now as the application has been added into your tenant, the first thing what you need to do is users and groups. That means you need to assign certain set of users and groups who can use this application. I'm clicking on the add user button to add few users for my application. I've added few particular groups and users over here and I'm going to assign them. The next thing which I wanted to do it is setting up single sign-on. Now this application supports SAML based single sign-on, so I'm going to enable SAML single sign-on for this application. Now this particular page shows the configuration for the single sign-on. Note that first thing what we have to do is update all these particular URL section and then only we can able to configure the other sections as needed. To do so, I have a Zscaler2 tenant where I logged in as an administrator. When you log in into the Zscaler admin particular tenant, there is a section called administration and under administration, there is an authentication settings. This authentication settings actually provides a way so that all the identity provider settings are here. If you do not know where this particular thing is, then you can actually refer our public documentation. All these particular public documentations are linked from the Azure portal. By clicking on the configuration guide, actually it opens the 
page where all these tutorials are actually uh, noted. This is the public documentation. That means it talks about all these steps. How do you add the Zscaler application from the gallery and how you configure the Zscaler particular app inside the Zscaler admin section. Here you can see we talk about authentication and authentication settings to configure single sign-on. So um, note that all these particular tutorials are publicly available for your use. Going back to my particular Zscaler tenant, you can see I can actually able to add a new IDP over here. For adding a new IDP, uh, it says like select your particular IDP uh, to migrate or I can add a new SAML IDP. I'm going to add the new SAML IDP over here. So I click on next and then I have to type the name for particular this IDP. Here I'll say Azure AD demo and now it is asking me for few particular URLs. All of this information I can able to get it from Azure Active Directory but before that what I need is the service provider metadata. The option for downloading the metadata is over here. So by clicking on the button it actually downloads this particular uh, metadata on my particular local file. I have downloaded this particular file on my machine and now I'll go back to the particular admin portal so that I can able to upload it. I have downloaded the XML file. Now I'm going to upload it here. So you can see there is an option for upload metadata file over here and I have to select the file which I recently downloaded. So on the desktop, I have this particular Zscaler metadata. I'm going to upload that particular file and say add. With that, it will populate all those particular URLs from the Zscaler uh, metadata file and will populate it for me. Note that the sign on URL is mandatory over here. That means I need to populate the sign on URL which I can use for configuration. You can able to refer to our documentation on the URL part, what should be the URL which you need to populate and we talk about that here in this section. Now we have to populate the sign on URL and the right sign on URL for this particular application is login.zscaler2.net. So once I populate that, you can see the error went away and I can able to save it. Once I save this particular configuration, now you can able to see that the attribute names and the SAML signing certification, SAML signing certificate is become visible now. I close this section and now I can download the certificates for this particular application. In the SAML signing certificate section, when I click on those three dots for an active certificate, I can able to see the PM certificate download option. When I click on it, I can able to save this particular file on my machine. And once I have this particular file saved, I can go back and now adjust the claims. In the claims section, Zscaler requires a name particular a name ID as a claim to be mapping claim. So I'm going to add few particular values over here based on the requirement of Zscaler 2 application. The first claim which I'll add is member of and the source particular attribute for that is user dot assign roles. I save this particular claim and the next thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to add a group claim. For the group claim, I can say group ID 
and security groups. Once those particular claim information is saved, then I need a given name as a claim. So I click on that and I copy that particular claim, say given name. And I now need to configure those particular claims here in Zscaler application. If you remember that we have created this particular IDP configuration and downloaded the metadata XML file previously from here. I'm going to enable this particular setting and now I'm going to upload the SAML certificate which we downloaded few minutes earlier. Now you can see that the upload is successful and my certificate is configured. The certificate expiry date is also been given here. I chose Microsoft Azure Active Directory as a vendor and now it is actually asking me to configure the login name attribute which is my name ID and the SAML portal URL. The SAML portal URL is the URL from where these Zscaler application is going to redirect the user for authentication. This particular URL has been mentioned on the single sign-on page as the configuration URL. Under configuration URL, it is called login URL. I copy that particular URL from there and I paste it over here. Note that the entity ID is zscaler2.net, which automatically has been configured for my application. And you can see that here. Now I'm going to enable auto provisioning and this is where the display name attribute and the group name attribute comes off. So for the group name we use member of as a claim and the department claim we can say department and for the display name attribute we are going to use given name. All these claim information is over here into your Azure Active Directory portal. You can see that I'm using given name. The name, name ID claim is we are using it for mapping and the member of claim which we have added few minutes earlier. With that particular thing, I'm going to save this configuration so that we can actually use this, use this IDP configuration for SSO. There is also an option over here for org specific entity ID and the org specific entity ID I have enabled it so that my um, organization can entirely use this particular um, single sign on connection. The authentication domain I am selecting it simply to test.net which is my test actually directory. I will save these particular changes and now you can able to see that Azure AD demo has been set. I can make this as my default IDP in the Zscaler application and save this configuration. With that, what will happen is going forward, all the traffic will be routed through Zscaler to cloud and the users will be prompted for authentication. Note that we selected this for simply test.net as a domain. That means all my organization users have to authenticate to Azure Active Directory through that particular username. Now we have configured the application on the Azure Active Directory side. We need to verify whether it's working or not. First thing to make sure that because Zscaler is a proxy application, you, are, you can open your internet options and in your particular connections, make sure that the LAN setting is pointed through Zscaler. Here you can note that um, my URL has been populated with gateway.zscaler2.net. Mostly this thing will come to you directly through the uh, administrator policy and as a user you don't have to do it. But for our testing we are going to set this up. So I'll just click on OK on both those particular things. Let's open the new in private window where we can actually able to test this particular integration. Now you can see that I can go to any website 
like support.com or microsoft.com, it actually goes through a Zscaler particular proxy. It is asking me to enter my username. I can actually use any particular username such as test admin at simplytest.net. Remember that we just configure simplytest.net as a domain uh, for this integration so that any user can able to use that. And when I click on the sign button, you can able to see that it is redirecting to Azure Active Directory for authentication. The login page comes and user actually enter the username. So I'm again actually entering test admin at simplytest.net as my user and click next. Here I'm entering my password now. And once I do that, I'm actually redirecting back to the original website from where I started. That means now all the users have to authenticate through Azure Active Directory to use any particular page using Zscaler single sign-on. Now that we have configured single sign-on for Zscaler, I'll share some best practices that you can follow. If you have applications on your on-premise server or on-premise IDPs, we recommend migrating these applications into Azure Active Directory. If you have SaaS applications, we recommend using Azure AD application gallery templates for single sign-on and user provisioning, which provides an efficient and secure authentication. Single sign-out is equally important as single sign-on. Don't forget to configure them as needed. If you have a scenario with shared devices, we highly recommend implementing single sign-on for those applications. To access the app, we recommend using My Apps Portal at applications.microsoft.com. You can click on the application that you want to use and it will automatically do single sign-on. When providing consent for any application, we recommend asking the admins for a business justification for using these permissions. This will provide an accurate reason for consent. Once you provide the consent, the audit log will add an entry which leads to a better security model for your organization. Regularly check for consented applications on new applications that are added to your tenant. And lastly, another security measure is assigning users and groups to the application and making that assignment required. That means the application is scoped to only certain set of users or groups who will be able to access it. Once single sign-on is enabled, you can apply conditional access policies on those applications without having to create conditional access policies per application. Make sure you create certain set of conditional access policies and apply it to the right set of applications. This way, you can minimize the number of conditional access policies in your organization. This wraps up our video and thank you for watching. See you next time.